Okay, welcome everyone. We're live on Facebook and also uh, here um, coming to you uh, from my home office. My name is Samalit Hogan. I'm today's moderator for the webinar today, which we're discussing social media tips for businesses during moments of crisis. Our presenter, Kate, um, I'll be introducing her in just a moment. I want to share with you that this webinar is provided to you thanks to the collaboration from the Western Mass uh, Technical Business Assistance Collaboration, which includes the Center for Women and Enterprise, SCORE, the Mass Small Business Development Center, the Mass Growth Capital Corporation, Common Capital, Valley Community Development, and the Franklin County CDC, where we're so we're funded by the Small Business Administration as well as the State of Massachusetts and UMass Eisenberg School of Management, and um, Samali Hogan with the Center with the Small Business Development Center Network. Our offices are located in Springfield, Massachusetts, and we're seeing clients right now one on one offering business advisory services and counseling. So today we're bringing uh, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin, who she goes by Kate. Um, she's a marketing PR communications professional which, uh, with Avidia Bank, and she's a candidate, MBA candidate at the Eisenhower School, School of Management. Kate, welcome to the program. Awesome. Thank you for having me today. No problem. So at this time, without further ado, I'd like you to start your presentation. And again, for everyone that's watching, you are muted and also your camera will not work during this webinar but you have the opportunity to ask questions during the Q&A button, the little talking button, the little talking uh, bubbles at the bottom, or by asking it in the chat. And we'll keep track of those and we'll make sure we answer your questions as we go along. So go ahead, Kate, and share your presentation. Great. Well, thank you again for having me today. Uh, this is definitely a hot topic given the current environment. Uh, so here's just some social media tips that you can use during moments of crisis. And a lot that I'm gonna talk about today are things that we're experiencing right now, but um, these are all great things to keep for and plan in the future and they're applicable for anything that could happen in the future. So just really quick, a little bit about myself um, and thank you for the very nice introduction there. Um, I've been working in marketing for about eight years now. Um, I primarily work in PR media relations, social media and content marketing. Uh, I also uh, help out over at the Center for Women Enterprise. I'm a marketing instructor over there uh, primarily in the Central Mass Worcester office. And uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm uh, pursuing my MBA. So going after that with the Eisenberg School of Management. So that's just a little bit about me, but currently I work at Avidia Bank, um, which is a community bank in Central Mass, but I've worked with a variety of businesses prior to my time uh, as a banker. Uh, I worked at a marketing agency, which served a variety of different businesses um, here in the United States and in Canada. So let's just talk about social media uh, in general right now. So we won't get into the business side just yet, but let's just talk about generally. So social media is super vital at this time. I don't know about you, but myself, I've been using it to connect with people. I've been isolated at home for a couple of weeks now. Uh, so it's a great way to connect. And a lot of people are doing this, whether they're a business, a nonprofit, um, a community leader, but just even on their personal side. So. It's a way for people to share updates to their customers, to their community. And I'll share with you some great examples of this throughout this webinar as well. One of the towns, or I should say cities, that recently did a great job with this uh, was the city of Framingham and they did a live stream on social media to connect with their community. Um, it was on their Facebook page and they did like a really nice Q and A session. So there's some different ways that you can utilize this no matter if you work in municipality, a business or a nonprofit. We've also found that social media is helpful because it's very nimble, right? We can get things out there really quickly for updates. And a lot of people have used this as their lifeline. So a lot of businesses that I'm seeing out there are saying, hey, we've modified our hours or we're doing delivery and they're doing this using social media. It's the quickest way to get a message out there. And as I've talked about, more conversations are happening online, both on the brand and the personal side. You can also see a lot of people are doing things like virtual happy hours and meeting up with their friends. Um, so this also happens within businesses as well. And you'll see here to the right, this is just an article about uh, why companies are turning to digital marketing and specifically to social media to survive COVID-19. So it's a good quick read if you're looking for it. So here are some tips for you uh, for a business in, in, during, a social, uh, during a crisis. So the first thing, 
first and foremost is to remove your scheduled posts. So if you're one of these companies or organizations that has scheduled posts out, uh, even for a month out, uh, consider just removing those scheduled posts or rescheduling them for later. I know that myself, I took down everything we had scheduled out and some things I was able to push it out to June or July and hopefully I won't have to push it out again. Uh, but for now, I just rescheduled some of those. And the reason being is that one, it appears really tone deaf to people. And right now we're not really at a state where it's business as usual. So what you wanna do is just, instead of directing all the attention to yourself or your brand, is to just remove some of that noise for the time being. Also, we know a lot of events are being rescheduled um, and changed and even canceled. So also instead of promoting an event that's no longer happening, maybe just take that down for now. Another tip here, which isn't totally applicable to social media, but consider looking at all your content that you have scheduled out. So if you have scheduled emails that are supposed to go out to maybe uh, you know, a newsletter list that you have or an email blast, maybe to promote a product or a service, just take a quick look at that and see if that tone fits with everything at the time. Blogs might also be scheduled out, radio spots, even video or television commercials. And on the note of social media, if you're running any sort of paid social media ads, maybe take a look at what you're promoting on your paid social media ads as well. So my next tip is to change your tone and goals. Obviously we're at an unprecedented time right now, but changing tone is something that I've found that's been really effective for social media at this time for businesses. One big thing that I'm seeing a lot of is people getting really personal. And I don't mean a bad way. I mean in a way that they're connecting with people who are following them. One of the things that I've seen a lot of people do is have a video maybe from a CEO or some leader in their community and they do a Q&A or they just speak to what's going on and get to answer some questions and it really humanizes everything that's happening. Plus it's pretty cool when you hear somebody who's maybe let's say a CEO who gets up there and shares their own struggles and that they're going through it and we're all in this together. And that's a really powerful message. You can see here, to your right, this example from Patagonia. This was on their Facebook page, um, also on their LinkedIn as well. But they talked about what they're going through and this was written from their CEO. And they shared that it's about the community, right? And, and conquering this together. So that unity was a really important message as well. And then empathy. So empathy is really important here as well. And this is for any time of crisis, of course, not just dealing with COVID-19. Empathy is key to bonding with your audience and people will remember that. It will earn a lot of loyalty and respect. So understand that people are gonna come to you. They're gonna have a lot of questions. People are panicked. It's good to say like, listen, I know, I understand. I get it that you're struggling. We all are, I'm gonna try to help you. So now more than ever, that tone of empathy is really important. In addition, it's something that should resonate through with your customer service as well. Okay, so we talked a little bit about tone. We talked about removing your posts, but what can you actually share right now? And we don't wanna just go radio silent. So here's a couple of ideas. Obviously there's plenty of resources out there like the State Department of Health, the CDC, uh, World Health Organization, share those if they're relevant. For some of us and some of our businesses, they really might not be relevant, but I've seen a lot of res uh, restaurants, for example, who have shared, hey, we're following all the CDC guidelines for producing food and delivering it to you in the safest way possible, or we're observing social distancing, which has been advised by the government, please respect that. So I think that that's been a good resource for people to share on social media. But again, if it's not, you don't need to share every single update either, but if it's applicable to your industry, it's worth sharing it out there. Another thing that might be applicable as well is resources for businesses. So there's plenty of things that are going out there right now for emergency funds, SBA loans, um, any sort of help. So that might be another thing that you might wanna share, particularly if you're in the B2B space. And then this is something that's kind of feel good, but what other businesses and nonprofits are doing to adapt. So I've seen a lot of cross promotion and that goes back to the messaging of we're all in this together. So maybe they're doing delivery or online ordering or running e-commerce. Maybe they're collecting donations or doing something unique. 
So that's a great way to cross promote as well. And oftentimes if you share from another business, they'll also share back. So to the right here is an example. This is Robinson's Hardware. And they have a restaurant called Kith and Kin who's been coming by to set up uh, in their parking lot every single day to, to serve lunch from a food truck. And they've been sharing pictures and talking about them and what's on the menu for the day, which is really neat. But then they've also been going out and shopping uh, in downtown Hudson where they're located and buying things like bagels in the bagel shop for their staff and checking in at different places. So that's another idea as well. And then you might have some good feel good news, right? So did something happen in your office or in your workplace or something that you really wanna share? Or maybe somebody's doing something really amazing in the community despite this crisis. So those are really good feel good things to share. And I think for many of us, we're feeling that fatigue, uh, particularly now. I know that every time I go onto different social sites, it's like coronavirus everywhere. But when you see something nice and you see something that's really like a feel good piece, you're gonna pause for a moment and you're gonna remember that because it stands out in all this noise. So certainly something to consider there too. So here's another tip, do more social listening. So take a look at the conversations that are happening around your industry. Um, you know, you might wanna just tune in to what's happening, do a quick search on Facebook or Twitter, or if you are involved in any local Facebook groups, see what people are talking about. What's worrying them? How can you reach out to them? How can you be available? And then tell your message to there. So that doesn't mean that you need to just go out and say like, hey, I saw that this was a problem and now we're running a special promotion for that. But if there are people experiencing hardships, there's a huge opportunity for you to pay attention and be really real in that, in that moment and help them. This could be a way to get word out about special discounts, deferred payment options, maybe if you're making your products available in a different way, or even just letting people know, hey, you know what, supply chains are running pretty low right now, we're doing all we can. So the more that you can communicate that, the better. Even if you can't supply it at that time, people will feel at ease if you're providing them frequent updates and social media is a perfect channel for that. I have two examples here of social listening. So the first one is for Tesla. Obviously this is a very big company, um, but an email went out and then this was all over the news. And one thing you don't want is to have uh, you to find out about a crisis or about employees in this case who have tested positive for COVID-19, you don't wanna find out about it by reading it as a headline and you didn't know about it to begin with. So this is a great thing to just keep in mind out there if you're monitoring for your brand and your business. Um, if you have a variety of employees, maybe just keep an eye out too. Uh, if anybody says like, oh, I think that an employee at this location tested positive, right? So you wanna be monitoring those conversations as well. And then below you can see here, so this was in a, a residence group for a local city. And they asked about, can you suggest a local CSA or veggie pickup or delivery service that is organic or has organic practices? So a lot of people jumped in and made some recommendations here, but let's say that you ran a farm stand or you have a small local grocery store. This is a great opportunity for you to say, yes, we do that. And please send me a message, happy to help you. Right, and that's a very welcome by that person. So there's a really great opportunity. So now let's get on to the next step. How can people help your business? If we don't tell people how they can help you, then they won't. And we all know this from general marketing, right? If you don't have a strong call to action, people won't take action. So it's really important for you to tell people how they can help your business out. So here's a couple of ideas. Share with them that they can order online or if you have e-commerce options or um, online options. Tell them to leave a review on Yelp or Facebook. Uh, I did put Google in here initially, but I did read last week that Google has disabled reviews. So if you do have customers who are going out there and trying to leave you a review on Google right now, uh, I don't know if it's totally blocking them, but you won't be able to see them on your Google listing page. So just keep that in mind, but maybe drive them to Yelp or Facebook. Also tell people to share your posts, right? And this is where, again, you can get really personal with people and say, listen, we're all doing the best that we can. If you could help us share our posts, um, that would help us, help us to stay in business, help us to keep our doors open. That would help us generate uh, more income for our employees, right? And just 
you don't have to beg, but people like to know why. And that's a great way to do that as well. Uh, buy a gift card or schedule an appointment. And that might be a couple months out when hopefully all of this is over. So here's a couple of good examples. Uh, this is a salon. She shared just those same exact ways, uh, purchasing some items, writing a review, um, sharing work on social media, purchasing a gift card and so forth. So those are some great examples there. And again, very personal. This is another business. So um, saying, hey, we're offering free shipping. Uh, here are some pictures of some of the goods that we have. And you can also see these items on Instagram. Also, we're giving away free gifts with every purchase. So there's a little incentive there as well. And I've seen a lot of businesses doing this where if you order takeout, then they'll give you a $5 gift card or something like that. So there's all kinds of ideas out there. And then this is another one from a food truck. So uh, you can order it and then pick it up right from the food truck, which is parked in their driveway right now. So some really cool ideas. So here's a couple more tips for you. I know that that sounds counterintuitive sometimes with social media, but probably now is the time to slow your posting cadence. So focus on the really important content. I know that a lot of us have to try to beat the Facebook algorithm and really work hard for that. But if you really want to get a message out there and it's really important, maybe just focus on those messages. So some of your evergreen content, let's say you have some filler blogs that you put in, maybe just remove those. And the only posts putting out are just ones that are relevant to the conversations happening now. And this goes back to, uh, you know, making sure that it's not tone deaf as well. The other thing here too is being clear, concise, and brief. And of course, as I mentioned, authentic and real is really important too. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of conversations to be had, but being very clear is gonna be helpful. That will also spare you from a lot of phone calls and confusion and questions and so forth. So the more clear you are in your post, the better off you'll be. And then of course, in this time, particularly with COVID-19, but with any crisis, just keep an eye out on the imagery. So I've seen a lot of people who are saying, hey, we're here for you, but then it shows them shaking hands. And obviously handshaking isn't something that's promoted at this time. So maybe try to find some other images that are out there. I'm sure there's plenty of people who are cringing with this image that's here right now. So, okay, so we slowed down our cadence of posting. We've taken care of our announcements. We stopped our advertising, but now what do we do? Well, here's a couple of ideas if you're looking to do some more things. The first thing is to work on your content library. This is the number one thing that I hear from businesses that they struggle with. Where do I find content? And where do I find the time to discover this content? This is a great time to, to take some time to do that. So build up some evergreen content that you can use for when after a crisis is over. So you can do some research, find some articles that are out there, some blogs, videos, uh, pictures, even build your own if you like. And this is a great opportunity to do that. You can also produce your own, maybe make some infographics to share, and then have it ready to go for when things have kind of blown over. The next tip is to do a social media audit. And I generally tell business owners to do this at least once a year, if not twice a year, and review what's happening on social media on all your pages. So a couple of things you might want to look at reviewing your contact information. So maybe your hours have changed given a crisis, maybe your phone number has changed given a crisis, um, but maybe it hasn't been updated in some time. Maybe you have a new web address. Also look at your page descriptions. This is specific for things like Facebook or Instagram. So look at your page description. What does it say? Does it still embody what you do every day in business now? And then if you have an old Twitter handle or an old account that you're not using anymore, it's probably a good idea to delete that, right? If you're not leveraging it at this time and you haven't been for some time, it actually leaves you more susceptible to things like fraud or somebody um, you know, taking over the account and then sending out posts as you. So maybe just delete that if you're no longer using it. And this is why the audit's really important because you might sit there and say, yeah, I actually haven't posted to that Twitter account since 2018. It's probably time to move it on. And then another thing to do with your social media, and this is more on the security side, is to go through and enhance your social media security. So 
I know we all hate to talk about things like that where people could take over or uh, you know, change your information or whatever it might be, but it's something that's really important to protect yourself. So a couple of tips are to look at your two-factor authentication. So that's when you log in and you get a second, um, not just your password, but you also maybe have to use a six digit code that gets texted to you or is through an authenticator application um, just to protect you a little bit more. And then who are your administrators on your pages? Maybe you have somebody who worked for you who no longer does, but they still have rights to your page. It's a good time now to clean that all up as well. And then maybe there's some different apps or plugins that you're using, and this is really applicable for uh, Facebook. So Facebook specifically uses a lot of different plugins out there. And if you're not using them anymore, it's time to just get rid of them. So that's a little bit of time to spend, ways to spend your time uh, while you're waiting for all of this to, to be over with. So now I'm happy to take any questions that might be out there. I've been seeing some pop up in the window here. Yeah, so thank you, Kate, for, for that very informative presentation. So at this time, I'd like to encourage everyone um, that's watching this webinar to ask any questions. You can either type them on the panel or raise your hand um, by going to the participants uh, icon and then raise your hand and I will unmute you so you can answer, ask your question. I'm going to unmute a few of my colleagues who are right now on the call. Great. Let's see here. Okay, one of, one of the questions we've been getting, which I think you touched on this, Kate, was, um, you know, what will be, what's your opinion, like really the best way, by the way, can you unshare your, sure. your, your screen real quick? What would be um, the best, um, your, your opinion on like, what's the best way to communicate with your clients at this time of what you're doing, your strategy? I know you, you, you gave a few examples, but mm -hmm. what would you say? Does it, does it vary by industry? You know, should you do it via email? Should you make a bunch of phone calls? What's the best way? I think it definitely varies by industry, but you know, if you reach out to your clients typically via email, then an email update is definitely helpful. Um, if you reach them mostly on social, then that's a great way. Um, it can't hurt to do both. Uh, and maybe if you have a website, put an alert on your website. We created at the bank, we did like a whole landing page of resources because we serve a variety of different audiences. But uh, you know, I think it's important to reach out the best way that you already do reach your customers. And if you're putting out messaging, I know there's a, people get really wordy with this stuff, but you don't need to get really wordy. You can just say, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. This is what we're following. If you have any questions, contact us and then give people the correct way to contact you. If you prefer it to be uh, via email, if you want a web form, that's the best possible way for you to let them know how to get in touch with you. And, and you mentioned about um, being sensitive to what people are currently going through. And I've seen a lot of different email type examples on that demonstrate that. Um, but but let's dig deep a little bit. Like how, give me some example, how would someone demonstrate that they're being sensitive to what their customers are going through? So there's a couple ways. Uh, the first is obviously if people are having some sort of hardship or they have a lot of questions, be patient. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of questions in the coming days. We've already been experiencing that in every industry. So just be patient because everybody's seeing it from their point of view. And there's definitely a lot of unrest and in some cases panic from people. And the best thing you can do is to patiently respond to them or at least set the boundary and say, listen, I don't have an answer for you right now. And it's totally okay to say that and say like, listen, I won't have an answer until tomorrow morning, but I will follow up with you. And that just puts people at ease. Uh, the other thing is too, if people haven't reached out to you yet, expect that they will. And I think by being really sensitive and saying, hey, you know, we're going through this as well and we're doing the best we can. So please be patient. I've seen a lot of this with people who have, let's say call centers or contact centers. They said, listen, we are seeing unprecedented volumes of calls coming in please bear with us at this, at this time. And I think people understand that and they say, okay, I get it. We're all going through this together. And that just puts them a little bit at ease and helps with that sensitivity. Right, right. And we have some questions here in the chat. Uh, Amy asks, what are the most common mistakes people make? Oh yeah, that's a good one. So 
I think one of the most common things early on that you see in any sort of crisis, and this is something even particularly now that we've seen is just the tone deafness. People just wanting to either continue to self-promote. Um, I've seen some people take advantage of some of the things that are happening out there and using keywords. Uh, so let's say buying up a bunch of keywords, not like COVID-19 and things like that, but then it's not even relevant to the conversation and it's only to push a product, which is kind of gross right now at this time to a lot of people. So uh, I would say don't take advantage of the situation. People will remember you for what you did. So if you're being, again, really sensitive about things, if you're being uh, very mindful about what you're putting out there and being helpful, people will remember that. Um, so that's one of the big things that I've seen a lot of lately. And even just the other side of it, so going completely quiet. Uh, now is not the time to go completely quiet. You might wanna spread some things out, but don't go completely quiet because that way you don't want people to forget about you. Top of mind is still important. Just go about it the right way. Great, great, that, that's great advice. And can you talk to us, uh, we have another question here from Dee asking, can you talk to, uh, more about LinkedIn and maybe using the groups on LinkedIn as a way to reach out? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen this a lot on LinkedIn and even on different Facebook groups. And there's a lot of industry groups out there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great way to say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, any thoughts, ideas this is a great time for you to get feedback if you're looking for feedback on some some ideas, particularly in industry. But even outside of industry, if you're looking to talk to people and maybe still obviously we all still want to make sales, we still want to market ourselves. So um, it's a great way to stay in that conversation and um, offer that support. So people might say, hey, I'm looking for this connection or I'm looking for this, uh, whatever it might be. And that's, that's a great way for you to respond and say, hey, yeah, I'm happy to help with that. Okay, great. Um, there's another question here we have um, from Amy. What about leveraging collaborative efforts as a strategy? Do you have any examples of collaborative efforts? And my assumption is that in, in between businesses. So businesses collaborating with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is prime time for that. I think it's it's a good thing to do anyways, regardless if we're in crisis, if you have an opportunity to uh, you know participate with another business in some collaborative effort, that's so incredibly powerful. But if you are doing it now, I think people are gonna listen to that and it really resonates with them. Uh, I cited, I lived in Hudson for quite some time. And uh, one of the things that I've seen is a lot of the downtown businesses have been sharing the same post on social media and tagging each other and saying like, hey, we're, we're here together and this is how we're gonna work together uh, to try to keep all of our doors open. So I think that that's been extremely powerful. One other thing I've seen on social media, which is pretty neat is um, kind of similar to this setup where a lot of people have been doing interviews on Zoom or doing interviews on uh, Instagram and sharing it onto social and saying, hey, we're gonna interview some people in the industry that you may have never met before. And it's been interesting content and people have the time to watch it right now. So it's been kind of a neat time for collaboration, but definitely recommend it as best you can. And think outside the box. Maybe you find somebody who's uh, in the government and municipalities that are doing something unique and get them involved. You know, it doesn't always have to be business to business, but it could be something like that or a nonprofit that you're working with. Great, great, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, I'm going to um, invite uh, a few of our of our attendees here, uh, Dee Dice from Valley Community Development, um, also Anita Eliason um, from the Small Business Center, Len Gendron from uh, SCORE. And uh, guys, if you are on the line here, can you please unmute yourself and tell us for any of you, also Amy Shapiro here from Franklin County CDC, she's joining us. Uh, guys, feel free to unmute yourself and can you share with us some of the stories, the examples that you've gotten from clients that you're currently working with? Um, I have a, this is Dee, I have a great story about uh, two businesses that collaborate with each other. So Holyoke Hummus down in Holyoke and Crooked Stick Pops mm -hmm. uh, got together and did a dinner and dessert uh, combo, oh, wow. which I rewarded my kids after we cleaned the basement and said, we're gonna have, you know, mm -hmm. dinner dropped off. And so they um, collaborated together. I ordered uh, one, I ordered right from Holyoke Hummus, but they took the order for Crooked Pops 
and uh, they delivered it all at once and it was great. Um, and I had never bought from either one of them before and uh, they were very appreciative and um, good supportive, but a great example of two different businesses collaborating. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dee, for sharing that. Um, we have another question here from the audience. Uh, Becky asked, my question is that I'm really angry uh, about uh, what the president, uh, to the president and want to show my anger on Facebook. Is that appropriate? Does that hurt my business? How could I do this effectively uh, without losing customers? <laughs> I suppose I'll, I can take some of that. Uh, so I, I would caution on your tone on that. Uh, there's definitely some different audiences out there that they will, and certainly people will say, yeah, I agree with you, but you might have some more people say, yeah, it's not really the place, particularly if you're, if you're doing it on your personal page, that's your personal page. If you're doing it on your business page, uh, unless you're really in the, in the political business, uh, I usually encourage people to try to stay away from that because it does just have that crossover. Uh, you know, there, there are certain things like uh, just, you know, at the holiday dinner table, you don't talk about, right? So uh, sometimes I think that's the best practice too, is like, what would I not talk about with my family and open that can of worms, particularly <clears throat> on your business page? Yeah, this is Len Gendron. And uh, uh, we have to keep in mind that over half of the people in this country are on one side or the other. It's pretty well split. If you want to give up half of your customers, go ahead. Right. So that's really what we're talking about. Agreed. Great. Thank you, Len, for adding that comment. Appreciate it. Um, if anyone else have any uh, last minute questions, um, please be, uh, feel free to post them. I'm looking at the Q&A. Here's another question here. Um, I own a bo small business. I will be starting an XC online shop. Would that be the easiest way to go online? So. Um, so Liz, what my advice to you is to connect with a small business advisor, either from one of our partners who were listed at the beginning of the webinar, like the Small Business Development Center score or uh, Franklin County CDC or Community Fund, uh, Valley Community Development, depending on your area. I will put a, um, uh, a couple of links here with a small business resources, Western Mass Small Business Resources, and those will all be listed there. Um, that would be my advice to uh, speak to one of them, uh, them as to how's the best way to start your business during this time. Then we have another, um, another question here from Karun. From one of my clients, I have a regular newsletter that's scheduled to go out on April 1st. I've been posting COVID-19 sensitive content on their Facebook page pretty regularly, but my client doesn't want to send COVID-19 newsletter out. He wants to send the regular newsletter. We go back and forth on this quite a lot. I'm not sure what to do. So I guess Kate Karun is asking for your advice on this for one of her clients. Sure, that's a, yeah, I know it can be complicated, especially when clients say that that's what they want to do. Uh, I would just make sure that the content is very sensitive and that it's not self-promotion wise. So if you're like, hey, we have this awesome deal going on and come in and check us out. Uh, I think that might be something to just be, be a little bit leery of at this time. But if you're doing something that's like informational, so maybe a blog, maybe some good news, if you have like a feel good story, that's really the content you wanna focus on instead of promotional items. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, uh, but just something that'll break up the noise. Cause I know that all of us, and I will say this, I actually tweeted about this recently, that I now know every email list that I'm on because every single person said, sent me what they were doing for their COVID-19 plans. And uh, I just went through and unsubscribed for most of them that weren't, that weren't of interest to me anymore. But it also uh, made me feel like I, I just, you just sent this out to me in some ways, just try to leverage that for, for a quick deal. I think you're on mute. Sorry, I was yeah. muted. <laughs> the computer reminded me, you're muted. Okay. So let's see, would you recommend Zoom or Facebook video to communicate um, with a group, possibly a group of clients? Uh, Zoom, I mean, right now we're doing live on Facebook too. That's us being straight uploaded. So I think Zoom is really good. Uh, I've seen uh, Instagram stories has also been really good too. So that's another good way. 
Um, and even if you wanted to record a webinar, you could do something like that. But I think having that interaction of being able to see number one, who's, who's watching and if they're commenting or reacting to it, uh, and then how many people have watched it and engaged with it. Uh, so I think that Zoom into Facebook Live would be really good. And then Instagram Stories is another one. And you can add people that you want to, or you can just do it yourself. Great. And if you were to recommend any list, uh, any other resources that small businesses could go to, to get more information about some of the, um, some of the things that you mentioned in your presentation, um, where should they go? Sure. So actually in the last page of my presentation, I have a couple of different links there. I, I think we're going to be sharing that out later, I imagine. Um, but there's a few different links and resources there. So some of them are um, how to do a social media audit. Uh, this one is from socialmediaexaminer.com. So they have a lot of great tips and a lot of them that are really relevant right now that they update every day. Um, there's also some good ones on like LinkedIn shares. So what to post right now. Uh, and there's been some great articles that I've found on LinkedIn that I shared in there. And then uh, there's some other ones like social media planner resources. So if you're looking to plan out that content calendar that I mentioned, uh, there's some really great free content calendars that you can just download and start to plug in. Great, great. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, Nancy is giving you a compliment. She's, uh, she's a participant. She said, this is very helpful. I'm a sole proprietor, 20 years owner of Therapeutic Massage Place in Hatley. And I found this to be very, very helpful. Um, Hopefully I can keep myself productive during this crisis. Thank you so much, Nancy, for your comment. Yeah, and we have you. another question here. Amy asks, any suggestions on how to talk about the business uh, that may have to, in regards to letting go employees and if the business is still open, um, how to deal that, how to communicate that with uh, customers and the staff? Yeah, so that's a, I mean, in the, in the PR kind of world, uh, that's a tough one because you don't always want to announce that you're having to let go of employees. And I know a lot of businesses are being faced with that right now. So be ready to either make an announcement or have some sort of uh, media statement ready. Uh, but I think that there's so many of them out there right now that it's really people are just highlighting the big level numbers and really not highlighting companies that are letting people go. Um, but just be prepared with that. And, and again, sensitivity is really important in this too, is like, this was the really difficult decision to make. And uh, maybe if there's a plan in place uh, and obviously you can't make guarantees, but if there's a plan, you know, in six months, if things start to look better, then we'll slowly start to rehire those employees back or we're trying to uh, assist with them in any way we can in the meantime, if there's any sort of like severance package or any, any sort of assistance you're providing them, it just helps to ease that. It's not easy to let employees go and um, definitely tough to hear, but you know, just be ready for that, but it's not something you want to make a full announcement on either. Right. Totally agree on that. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Kate, real quick, would your presentation, would you make that available uh, to the uh, attendees of this webinar? Yeah, absolutely. You can send it to me and I'll make sure it gets to them. Great. And also I'm going to, at this time, I'm going to post um, right at the end of this uh, webinar, I'm going to post the link to our Facebook page. I'm going to do actually right now. This webinar has been recorded live on Facebook. So by going to the, our Facebook page, you'll be able to um, go through the, the presentation again. And in addition to, for those of you who uh, register online for this workshop, um, you'll be receiving a copy of Kate's presentation. Um, if there are no further questions, Kate, thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us tonight, this afternoon. Um, uh, and also I wanted to remind everyone um, that we have an upcoming webinar uh, coming up of February 8th, uh, sorry, Whew, hold on, this is all messed up. April 1st, <laughs> Wednesday, April 1st at 1 p.m. We will be uh, joined by the Massachusetts Department of Career Services uh, Rapid Response Team and we'll be discussing alternatives to layoffs. So for those of you who have employees and are trying to figure out every way possible to um, avoid laying off your employees, join us on Wednesday at 1 p.m. again uh, for a live webinar. Um, and um, I will post uh, information is posted on that link that I sent out to um, on the chat with all the listing of all upcoming webinars here in, in Western Mass. 
So um, once again, I want to thank all of our partner partners that are making this webinar possible. Um, the Center for Women Enterprise, the Small Business Development Center, SCORE, Common Capital, Mass Road Capital Corporation, Franklin County CDC, the SBA, the uh, State of Massachusetts, and uh, UMass Asimov School of Management. And last but not least, thank you so much, Kate, for being with us here today. Um, I've gotten really great feedback from a lot of folks who are on the line that it's been a very helpful, helpful webinar. Thank you. Happy to help. You're welcome. All right. Everybody have a great day. And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to a small business advisor near you, any other organizations that I mentioned. Have a great day and be well.